morning. My name is Linda, and I would like to welcome you to St. George's United Methodist Church. Please note that there is a red notebook at the end of your pew. Please sign it and hand it on down. You might meet somebody new, or if you're visual like me, you might remember someone's name that way. No matter where you are on your journey in life, you are welcome here. Whether your journey is new and changing course, or slowing down and settling in, there is a place for you here, and you are welcomed. If you are confident in who you are, are still trying to figure out where you fit in, you are welcomed here. Whether you are feeling strong and centered, or meek and confused, healthy and sure, or struggling to make it through the next thing, there is a place for you here, and you are welcomed. If your relationship with God is stronger than ever before, or still in its fledgling state, there is a place for you here, and you are welcomed. We are all children of God, and we are all loved by him. We bring our gifts, our pains, our hopes, and fears. We bring our experiences that made us stronger, even while some of them were trying to break us. We bring all this to this place, and we are all welcomed here. Come with an open mind, ready to hear the word and feel its strength. Come with an open heart to embrace the love and feel its healing powers. Come and listen for the sacred spirit that calls to us to love thy neighbor wholeheartedly, to seek justice, create peace, and practice compassion. This is our place, and we are all welcomed here. If you'll please stand and join me in the call to worship. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world, let us worship God. Let us pray. God of goodness and grace, gather us in your arms of love. Gather us as people of your goodness and grace. Gather us in worship and prayer that we may be strengthened with faith and courage. Gather us as those who are eager to live and to share your goodness and grace. Amen. I invite you to remain standing as you are able as we sing together number 9-8, To God Be the Glory, and that's in the red hymnal.
may be seated. We are fortunate this morning to have with us gracing spaces. As you may remember from our letter from the, the church, we are doing um, a Lenten offering, and half of that Lenten offering goes to gracing spaces. So I invited Bill and Marin here to tell us about gracing spaces. My name is Bill Carey, and I'm with Gracing Spaces, and I just wanted to thank you all for inviting us here to, to share the mission and the work that we do and for your support. The Wardaks, a family of seven, um, a father, a mother, and five kids, arrived from Afghanistan in that crazy summer with nothing but the clothes on their backs. Uh, they went to Fort Dix first, and then a hotel for about 60 days, and finally they uh, settled in Manassas in an empty townhouse. They were eating together on the floor uh, and had no furniture. There was a Lamb Center client. He'd been homeless for a few years, living in shelters on and off. Uh, he found work. He got his first apartment. It was exciting and wonderful, but it was empty. He had nothing to cook with, nothing to sit on, no bed to sleep in. A school social worker noticed a child was regularly coming to school in a swimsuit. Uh, she found out the child was sleeping on the floor at home and didn't have any other clothes, and she reached out to us. Gracing Spaces works primarily with people in crisis, refugees, uh, folks transitioning from homelessness, uh, folks escaping domestic violence. Our mission statement says that we grace each space, um, enabling volunteers to provide hope and caring service to the community. For the people our, we serve, though, our goal isn't just to furnish their new living space. We do that, but that's not the real goal. Um, our real goal is to welcome them into community, um, to let them know that there are people around them uh, who love them and care for them, and to make the love of Christ a bit more present in their lives that have been unimaginably challenging. So... Towards the end of the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus says in a parable that whatever we do to the least of our brothers and sisters, that we do unto him. Um, Gracing Spaces started as a ministry of Lord of Life Church uh, as a way of responding to that call. We love because Christ first loved us. Because we're working with folks in crisis, we work quickly. We turn around almost all of our requests in less than a week, and most of them in just a few days. Because we're working with folks in crisis, we work broadly. Um, we want social workers to be able to fill all of their clients' needs in one fell swoop, not to have to sort of go around to a bunch of different organizations. And I'll say it's, it's hard work. It's challenging work. Um, furniture is big and bulky. Um, a kitchen, you know, if, if you think about your kitchen and all the drawers, a kitchen needs a lot of sort of fiddly bits and bobs to, to be able to, to cook. So to work fast, we need to keep those supplies on hand, and that means having a place to store them. It means organizing them. It's tricky. Lots of hands and hearts touch each request that we receive. Uh, our volunteers uh, communicate with social workers. They plan the orders. They schedule furniture pickups. They drive our trucks. They organize the depots, which is a big job. They clean and improve the furniture that we give out. Um, I, one, of, one of our volunteers, she fixes all of our lamps and makes sure that they work right and have the right shade and all of that. Um, we find decorative pillows and pictures that match the sofa because we don't just want the space to be functional. We want it to be beautiful and warm and inviting. Um, we raise money. We send thank you notes. Um, we figure out how to get insurance for our trucks. We figure out how to get liability insurance for our volunteers. We keep our inventory spreadsheets. We do lots more. It's a labor of love for our volunteers, and it has been for the past 20 years. And we've been able to stay an all-volunteer organization for those 20 years. Everybody involved with Gracing Spaces is doing it um, out of the love of God and as a response to his call to serve our neighbor. Um, we've got, so, so we'll have a little table out in the narthex um, just a quick overview of the, the impact we've had in the area. Um, we, in the last calendar year, we served about 1,000 clients, more than half of whom were children. 
um, we gave out about $175,000 worth of furniture and home goods. Um, we've got the specific numbers of, you know, sort of how many beds and how many dining room tables and how many chairs. Um, but that's not all of the impact we have um, because we work with other folks who are facing hard transitions. Um, families in the wake of the death of a loved one. Folks leaving a long-term home to downsize. People who want their long-loved furniture, dishes, pictures, paintings, not to end up in a landfill, but to find a second life blessing others. Um, we can bless folks by picking up their furniture, picking up their home goods, and getting them to people who need them. Um, I, a story about that. My wife's father passed away, um, and we donated lots of the things from her parents' uh, house to Gracing Spaces. And, and emptying the th their 30-year family home was a hard process. A few weeks after we did that, we were helping out with a Gracing Spaces makeover. So um, we do a lot of uh, client pickups, but we also sometimes go do a makeover where we go to the client's new house or new apartment and set it all up for them and make it lovely and wonderful. And, uh, and we were there, we were doing a makeover for a woman who was uh, escaping from domestic violence. And as we were unpacking the kitchen, um, we saw Marin's parents' dishes. Um, and it was a real comfort to know um, that her parents would have loved that those dishes that had graced their home were now gracing the home of someone in, in such need uh, of a little beauty and, and a little warmth. This is an area of real abundance and real need. Um, so at Gracing Spaces, we love to, to connect people, right? To connect people who have enough to share with people in, in, in need of those things. Um, the, uh, we were, um, at our Wednesday Lenten service, we, we read from the Gospel of Mark the story of uh, Jesus feeding the multitude. And, uh, and Jesus' uh, disciples come to him and say, hey, there's a lot of people, like send them away to get food. And, and Jesus turns to the disciples and says, you give them something to eat. And, and reading that, I, I imagine Jesus turning to all of us and saying, you give people something to eat. You know, you, you give people the furniture and the goods that they need. And, and the volunteers of Gracing Spaces um, are trying to, to live out that call. Um, so we're very thankful um, for your assistance. We're very thankful for your partnership in that. Um, as it's a challenging task, we, we do have, you know, we always have needs as an organization. Um, the biggest is prayer um, for our clients, for the social workers who are supporting them, and for our volunteers. Um, the other is more helping hands. Um, we're always looking for more volunteers. If you'd like to come work with us, it's a fun group of people to be a part of. If, if, you're, if you're young and have a strong back and want to haul furniture, we love volunteers who can help with that. Um, if your back is maybe, maybe a little more tired, um, we always uh, love volunteers who can help out behind the scenes with the clerical work and, and the organizing as well. Um, and, uh, and I guess our last need, and, and my wife kind of looked at me funny and I said, well, I'll do it in a jokey way. If anybody has a warehouse, um, <laughs> the, uh, we're currently looking, looking for a warehouse space. Um, we're, we're limited in the work that we can do by the storage space we have available. And, and it's tricky finding a warehouse around here. This is an, uh, not an industrial area. So, so you know, if, if you know somebody who knows somebody who has a warehouse, we'd, we'd, we'd love to talk to you. Um, thank you so much for your support. Um, it, it's a real blessing to know that, that there are folks um, who care about the community uh, in the same way that we do. Thanks, Bill. Now, if you'll stand and join with me in the passing of the peace, and you will notice it is responsive this morning. You are God's accomplishment. You are God's joy. You are created in Christ Jesus to do good things. As are you. When we live into God's plan, these good things become our way in the world. Goodness and love will be our way of life. Please turn and greet one another with the peace of Christ.
warm heart. Again. <laughs> Doing the announcements, can you mention we need help to move furniture for hypothermia? I'll try to remember. Yeah, and then the other thing is just have people pray for hypothermia. So that'd be okay. Good. Good morning. How are you guys? Um, I don't think Talia is quite awake. Are you awake? <laughs> okay. I have a question for you. Do you pray? Uh -huh. Yes, you do? When do you pray? Do you pray before you go to sleep? Do you pray before you eat a meal? you're happy? Do you pray when you're scared? No? Ooh, okay. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 6 through 18, it says, Rejoice always, pray without stopping, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So I'm going to teach you a pocket prayer. Do you know what a pocket Finally, some good responses here. Um, we're going to say a prayer when we are nervous or scared. You do have a pocket. You've got two pockets. I see. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is put your hand out. Okay, can you make a fist? Make a fist. I have to put it like this so I can read it. Okay, so got your fist. So the first, put your finger out. God, I know that you are here. Repeat after me. God, I know that you are here. Second finger. I know that you made me brave. That you made me brave. I have nothing to fear. You will protect me. You will protect me. And then your thumb. I am loved. I am loved. Okay, let's do it again this time, just saying it. Okay, you ready? God, I know that you are here. I know that you made me brave. I have nothing to fear. You will protect me. I am loved. Now, put it back in a fist and put it in your pocket. Okay? Now, let's bow our heads and pray. Repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for being our Father. Thank you for being there when we need you. And thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, I have a flyer here so you can take it home. You probably just need to give it to your parents. Okay. There you go. And these two have parents, so that works. You guys can practice it at home. There you go. Okay, perfect.
<laughs> I love watching them run out. I get so excited. The scripture reading from today is found in the book of John, chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. You can follow along in the bulletin or in your Bible. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because in they have not believed in the name of the sorry, the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment that the light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And if you'll stand and join us in hymn number 363, and can it be that I should gain, we're going to do stanzas 1, 3, and 5.
Will you pray with me? Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thine sight. Amen. We've heard this before. Or maybe we've seen the signs of sporting events, John 3.16. Although it seems the signs appear less and less. It's easy to let this passage wash right over us because it's so familiar. Many of us, if we've got any scripture at all memorized, it's John 3.16. We may know this. But do we really know its context? We may know that it is part of a conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus, who happens to be a leader of the Jews. Nicodemus, who comes to Jesus at night seeking answers. Just before this monologue of Jesus, Nicodemus is struggling to understand what it means to be born from above. He is struggling with the question of what he believes about Jesus. He's conflicted. Most, if all of us, have known this conflict at some time. Jesus expands his explanation to the verse we know so well. First, he draws a parallel between himself and the serpent on a pole. The serpent on the pole, which is in the book of Numbers in the Old Testament, the exalted serpent saves the people from being bitten by snakes, just as the exalted Jesus saves us that we might have life eternal. For God so loved the world, God loves the whole world, that whosoever believes in him Is it because of God's love we are eternally part of the kingdom, or is it because we believe that we are eternally part of the kingdom? It's both. It starts with God's love, grace. Yet some do not accept the grace that God gives to everyone. Some reject God's love. Some do not realize that believe is a verb, always a verb in John. It is something you do, and it must not be reduced to merely giving cognitive affirmation to certain propositions. In order to make the kingdom a reality on earth, we must do faith in response to God's love for us. So when the world looks at us, the church, what do they see? Do they see someone holding up a sign referring to an unfamiliar book? Do they see our discipleship in action? Do they see us going to our members-only meeting, that is church? Or do they experience us going into the community, loving people where they are? Instead of a stein at sporting events, can we share the love of God through our actions.
Let us be in an attitude of prayer. You know us too well, Lord. You know that we would like the ways of discipleship to be easy, to have the paths laid out in a neat line with the future clearly visible at all times. But part of our journey is obscured by our own greed and fear. You do not block the way to hope and peace. Our own fears provide the barriers, and far too often those barriers take the forms of alienation and prejudice. Write your words on our hearts. Merciful God, plant your transforming love in our spirits. Give us courage. As we have gathered this day to bring before you our concerns and our joys and our sorrows, give us hearts of peace and confidence in your all-sustaining presence. Lord, we lift up now those who are on our hearts and our minds. We lift them up silently that you will hear our cries to you, our joys, our shouts of celebration. Help us to set our feet on this pathway toward the cross and beyond. Now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now we have a special treat. We have a skit about discipleship in action. that in mind. We're not talking about meeting. We are talking about fellowship, having time together, getting to know one another, people that have been members of the congregation for 25 years and other people who have just entered our doors. Everyone is always in the next four months. Oh, thank you for meeting. Dinners where you're actually serving a dinner. Um, you could also go to the Lamb Center, serve food. But it's things of simple things to just be together. And maybe it's going out for dinner. Many, a couple years ago, we did dinners for eight. So it's just a little bit different. The reason we picked six, too, is that you can always bring a friend. It could be a, your next door neighbor, it could be someone that you meet at gathering grounds. Or it could be another member of the congregation who's like, actually, I would love to learn how to paint and go to sip and wine with you. Everyone is welcome.
and the Holy Spirit, and each of you to obey all that I have commanded you. Surely I am with you always, to the very end of age. Many blessings to all of you, and I love her with you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Carrie. As we have been saved by grace for the goodness of all, may we share our gifts of grace for the goodness of God's world. The World Service Fund is one of seven apportioned funds of the United Methodist Church. Basic to the financial program of the United Methodist Church, this vital fund helps to build new churches, prepare clergy and lay leaders, increase the numbers of young clergy, and pay missionary salaries. It also helps to expand Bible studies, provide leadership for youth ministry, continue a proud tradition of cooperation and dialogue with other faith traditions through our interdenominational and ecumenical work, and express the church's commitment to God's reign through advocacy for peace and justice. The World Service Fund is a financial lifeline to long list of Christian mission and ministry throughout the denomination. We give here at St. George's in two ways. First, we give in the offering plate, which is located in the back of the sanctuary. Second, we give online at stgeorgesfairfax.org under our community. Let us now receive our offering.
age, guys, okay? You guys are 39. <laughs> we can do it, okay? Here we go. God gives grace, okay? <laughs> Here we go, measure 39. I'm going to give you four. One and two and three and four. Okay. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. One and two God, you have richly blessed our lives with love and bounty beyond measure. Bless these gifts we return to you now, that we may bestow the same riches of your love and grace in the world. Amen. I invite you to remain standing as we sing together number 357, Just As I Am, out of the Red Hymnal.
morning we have a lot of exciting things going on, and I hope you will take the time to visit the tables in the narthex. We've also set up coffee in the narthex, so you can get your coffee, sign up for a small group, learn about gracing spaces, and sign up for the Monday Thursday dinner, all in the narthex. So I hope you will join us for that. Now go forth to do the work of the kingdom. Go forth to put love into action. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.